Barbados National HIV AIDS Commission was established in 2001 with a mandate to strengthen and create partnerships in response to HIV across the sectors, as HIV is not only viewed as a health issue, but a matter which affects all aspects of life. The role of the Commission is to coordinate the national HIV response. In 2001, when the government decided that it was going to take a sector-wide approach to its HIV response and take firm action, it was decided that there would be a commission that would guide the process. Previously, it was dealt with in the Ministry of Health under a National Advisory Committee on AIDS, NACA, but then it was seen as broader than public health. It was seen then as an issue for all concern across, the, across government and across society. And therefore, that was the role then of the Commission to be that coordinating body of the National AIDS Program. A mandate was implemented to help assist the Commission with its work. The mandate of the Commission is actually to provide government with the means of effective coordination. And this we do um, with under the National Strategic Plan, which is, is which speaks to the expanding multi-sectoral approach. Um, we do this guided by the UN, at the moment, the UN zero concept or zero theory, where we are looking to zero infections, zero deaths, and zero stigma and discrimination. And that is what is guiding us right now. But really and truly, how we do this is through the promotion of the adoption of safe behaviors, through increasing our, the access to prevention services, treatment and care, strengthening institutions that govern the National AIDS program, as well as you collecting and using strategic data in order to inform all of the programs that are implemented under the National AIDS program. To assist in its implementation of programs on HIV for Barbadians through the public and private sector, the Commission receives funding from the World Bank. The World Bank project is to support the National Strategic Plan. There's a National Strategic Plan right now which is in, in, in progress, which is 2008 to 2013. And that plan is guiding the overall um, strategic direction of the National AIDS Program. And right now, that what happens is that the World Bank um, project, which is a, like the like the national strategic plan 2008 to 2013 supports the national strategic plan so its project objectives are those which are commensurate with those in the national strategic plan and it is very much uh, with an emphasis on prevention as you know it's all right to say that we have done wonderfully in care and treatment because there was a first bank project which looked mainly at sensitizing persons, say, telling them what HIV is about. And, but that was very successful. What we found out that we have not been able to translate that knowledge into um, behavior change and prevention um, behavior. So what we are now focused on is prevention. And you'll see that a lot of the monies that come under the, the World Bank loan are put in the area of prevention because treatment is wonderful but it's not sustainable. Um, in terms of how it is administered and took the money, it is under in the government budget lines. So each ministry will have a budget line where money is placed for them to allocate it to them for use in HIV programs and under this they do their own sensitization and work in HIV programming with their own internal stakeholder holders as well as their external customers. So that, that is how it goes through for the public sector. For the others, which would be like civil society organizations, there's a civil society grant scheme where um, groups are encouraged to put proposals on the table and we fund them and they're results based. So we have to see what the results are and on that they could go forward and get another tranche and phase it. With World Bank funding to Barbados soon coming to an end, how will this impact the island? 
I think that it's going to be quite positive. It, it will be positive because what we're doing right now is leveraging the monies that we have um, to make sure that we secure the future of the program. The program will not end by the end of the project. What we're doing is making sure that while we do have the funds, because as you know, Barbados is not really eligible for much um, concessionary or aid funds. So what we're doing right now with the monies that we do have is making sure, for instance, that we strengthen capacities, training, training across the sectors and across the, the programs, that we are building in capacity within our institutions, and that we are also making sure that we put in place those kinds of programs that will take us into the future. Integrated HIV and sport, for instance, establishing a, 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 a research unit that is a repository for all research in HIV, and doing other, other areas of working with ministries, for instance, some of which are obvious, like probation department, but some that are not so obvious, the family a culture, youth and sports, working, for example, with, um, with, the, with um, church groups and putting those capacities in place that will carry the program and sustain the program because we know that we will not get loans like that again. So we have to make sure that what we do have, we put it in an investment for greater returns. The Commission works with several organizations across the island to help assist with plans to address behavior change in Barbados. We've decided that we're going to look at a, a, a three-pronged approach. Um, we recognize that behavior change is not the only uh, methodology that you can use to kind of assist in the, the response to HIV. Um, and we recognize that we have to deal with things like the, the biomedical um, component, there's also a structural element that we need to deal with, which are kind of like policies and laws, um, and then as well as the behavioral, uh, behavioral bit. So what we try to do really is to focus our attention on, from the commission's perspective, we focus our attention on the, the behavioral bit. Um, I will do lots of training. We will try to make sure that when people do their work plans and send them to us, that the, 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 the stuff that they're trying to do, the, the, the actual activities that they're trying to undertake, has a, a behavioral component to it so that we know that we're going in the right direction. Unfortunately, with respect to behavioral change, it may be some time before we find out if the programs are truly working. A behavioral change impact takes a really long time to show. So we have to kind of wait um, in the long term to see where, where we're going. But some of, by, with some of our short-term monitoring evaluation, we can see that there has been significant change in our partners' attitudes towards the kinds of activities that they're doing, um, how much energy they're putting into making sure that the behavior change, um, the, the components of the things that they're doing have the right kind of focus in that um, people kind of think that behavior change is just um, a new thing that you can just do. It really takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of planning, it's participatory, so you have to involve your target audience, you have to segment the audience. So there are lots of different components that have to be done. So in that regard, we're starting to see people moving towards that, but we do still have a, a good way to go. Like most organizations, the Commission has had some challenges and triumphs over the years. I think what we've done really well is that we have managed to work on the multi-sectoral response and that we've had a very good um, very good response from our partners and working in partnership, especially with civil society organizations and other ministries and departments. I say that's one of the things that we've really done well. We've been able to um, also launch the CSO grant system and having launched that, we've had a number of people who have um, responded by sending in their um, applications and some of them are actually completed and, and so on. And of course those would have had a behavior change focus to them as well. So um, we've done fairly well in those areas. I think some of our challenges is, is that we do recognize that we need to work with some specific populations, some key populations. And those key populations are identified as men who have sex with men, sex workers, um, drug users, and so on. So we really are struggling. Um, this is a major challenge in getting people on board and other organizations on board working with these specific groups to kind of address the issues that we need to address them. 
Many civil society organizations are now better positioned to host HIV and AIDS programming through the Civil Society CSO Grant, which is dispersed through the National HIV AIDS Commission. The funds, which are part of a grant from the World Bank, seek to give these organizations opportunities to create programs suitable to their clientele. The National HIV AIDS Commission consultant for the CSO grant scheme is Captain Marlon Patrick. If I can have the ordinary man in the community center who speaks my language, who understands my behavior and whatever else, then perhaps the CSO, the civil society organization, should have the initiatives and the innovations to take the program down to the next level. So I think this, um, it is practiced in other places around the world where civil society organizations are really the backbone or the bedrock for bringing about change because they understand the people's needs, they understand what the people want. So I, I believe that like anything else, um, we need to use this method or this vehicle to then get into our communities a little deeper and they were by see it fit that we can use this strategy as to expand and upskill the program. The CSO grant system caters to existing CSO organizations with ideas which address behavior and communication change. So far, about 20 grants have been dispersed, all ranging from independent persons to well-established organizations. When a proposal comes into the commission, we are expecting that the grant, the proposal, sorry, would be written in a fashion that would address behavior communication change. We are not necessarily looking for grants that would be more or less in a whole all phase of the program where we would do a lot of sensitization and a lot of education like but nowadays we are, we are more or less focusing on how to move the education that we have done so well in the past years we want persons to demonstrate that they are taking that demo that education to change their behavior so our prog our initiatives now mainly focus on the behavior change component even although i would have said behavior change we would also like to see some reinforcement of the educational compass as well because we would understand that reinforcement would also bring about some edu some change in our behavior. Um, outside of that, we do not want the programs or the projects also to sit in the same dry format classroom settings, um, people, persons who are attending kind of bored and whatever. We're looking for new ideas, new interventions. One of the recipients of the grant is the Barbados Council for the Disabled. Operations Manager for the Council, Rosanna Tudor, explained that the grant came at a timely manner as it helped them continue their education program on sexual reproductive health. With the grant, two PSAs catering to the disabled community were created. This is timely as it is believed that most of the information related to HIV and AIDS is not presented in a manner which is suitable to the disabled. A lot of the, interna the, the information that is um, in the mainstream schools even, it bypasses the intellectual challenge and they don't even get the message when you're sending this information to the schools, etc. They don't get it because it's not formatted so that they can understand it. So um, we had to take it in our own hands and start creating awareness among society. And um, we sent our proposal to HIV Commission and um, they were very excited to help. The Ministry of Labor is a government department that has been instrumental in implementing HIV and AIDS education programs. The ministry's program would have commenced in 2001. But the expanded program, which is the AIDS program, and the, um, basically in the Ministry of Health, in t under the body of the National HIV and AIDS Commission, and the Ministry of Labour would have been one of the I think there were about six or seven key lay ministries that would have been asked to set up a program within their ministries to look at key populations. Right, that program commenced with a um, core committee or group of persons uh, which has representation from basically our social partnership. We have the MP 
employers unions, the Barbados Employers Confederation. We also have the um, CITUSAL, which is represented by the National Union of Public Workers and the Barbados Workers Union. We also have the Ministry of Health, of course, the National Heterogeneous Commission. We have um, Ministry of Civil Service, and we have also NGOs, we have Finance Creative Workshop, we have Care Barbados, which is the association with persons living with and affected with HIV. We also have the AIDS Society of Barbados, which is one of the oldest um, NGOs. The Labor Department, we also have the Barbados Vocational Training Board and the um, TVET. The Labor Department has introduced a number of activities and programs to help reduce the incidence of discrimination against persons living with HIV. There are um, about three main components, the education and training, then we have an outreach component, and then we, like, we look at uh, policy, legislation, and so on. With the policy document, we would have worked before on the social partners of Barbados um, Code of Practice for the workplace. And since that, we've also done a document, a similar document for the public service. We've adapted it for the public service. We are currently looking at developing legislation to address discrimination in the workplace. Okay. With our education and training program, we try to look at um, training in terms of peer education training and also stigma reduction. And we always try to reach workplaces and so on that you wouldn't normally get to with the training and so So like we do bus tours and we do health or wellness fairs in targeted areas. In terms of the bus tours, we try to go, we've, we've done Lower Estate, the businesses in that area. Mm -hmm. We've, uh, for the last two years, we've targeted the agriculture workers. So we've worked with um, Barbados Agriculture Management Corporation in terms of going to the farms and plantations. What we try to do, after we've mapped out an area that we want to go to, we get, um, we work with Transport Board in terms of we usually do jitney bus. And we get a team of our educators. Um, those persons we work with will be drawn from across the public service again. We have volunteers from the Ministry of Agriculture. We also have Ministry of Health on board. We have workers from in the ministry itself and various other ministries across the public service. We basically go to the workplaces. We call ahead. We ask them for a, a little bit of time just to stop and speak to the workers. And we try to do, share information. We also try to do like a condom demonstration and so on, and to give them the pamphlets and so on. So if they have any burning questions, any quick questions, we try to answer that. Superintendent with the National Conservation Commission, Winston Milliton, has been a volunteer with the Ministry of Labor's bus tours since its inception. He believes that the tours are very beneficial and he's very happy to be a part of them. For me, I really went forward for it because in the initial stage, I believe too many people were losing their lives to this. And it is heartbreaking to actually sit and hear people talk, especially those who would have contracted the, the virus in the early stage. So um, it was a plus for me to go out and actually try to help people, you know, to give them early warning. And if I uh, save one person, I feel good. You know, if you impact on one person, I feel good. Um, a lot of people, you'd be surprised to know how many people don't know. Um, and they are, I don't know how to use the word, but I would say ignorant to the, to the use of condoms to protect themselves and actually to HIV and AIDS. Um, although it's been on the TV, it's been on the radio, it's been in the news media, people are still ignorant to it. A lot of people don't pay attention. And you don't actually feel it until it hits home. And then you'll find people who say, oh, if I didn't know. You know, when everything was there for them. Has the Ministry of Labor noticed any changes in behavior as it relates to the projects implemented? I can say yes, um, to some extent, right? Um, let me use our most recent, and that has been the one to the agricultural workers. Because coming out of that, the bus tours to the various farms and plantations, we were invited back to do some follow-up um, activities. We actually had, at the wellness fair, we had one or a couple of the workers actually performing some HIV and AIDS songs. I 
can see from a, in a positive like that. Um, persons are taking in the information, maybe not as much as we would like, right? But persons are taking in the information. Over the years, the staff of the Ministry of Tourism have used creative campaigns to promote awareness of their programs relating to HIV and AIDS. The, um, the Ministry of Tourism, we were one of the first ministries that got involved with the fight against HIV and AIDS. Um, I guess they believe that because we had a large target group, there's 23, approximately 23,000 persons working in the industry and about 1 million visitors to the island each year. So we were thought to be a good target group to start with. It was thought that the committee would be a good way to go, but we have not actually had a formal committee. But what I can say is that the staff at the Ministry of Tourism, they have been really, really supportive. So we've been able to pull off all of our programs in a really timely and really good manner without having a committee. We've done uh, all of our budgeting has it has been really good and the programs that we have executed. Several programs have been implemented. We would have done a lot of stuff with the arts. We thought the arts was a good way to educate persons without the formal setting of a classroom. So over the past six to seven years, we have been having programs through the arts where we would have a premiere for the most part of a program. For example, Secrets, the original screenplay for TV. And we had three, we had two secrets, and we're in the process of doing a third one. And we would premiere that at the Frank Column Hall and invite all of our constituents. And we've had really good feedback with that. Last year, we've had one dance recital, and that was very well received as well. We thought that that was a good way to do it. And it, as I said, people really responded well to that. The ministry also works with individuals within the tourism industry to create peer educators. But as peer would suggest, they would interact with persons in their offices or wherever they work, for example, in the hotel industry. If someone works in the kitchen, they would have someone in the kitchen to speak with. If they work with the front desk, they would have someone in that area. So we try to train persons in all areas of the, of the sector. Our staff is a definitely a main part of our educational thrust. Um, every year we have, a, for want of a better word, a refresher activity. It doesn't, as I said before, we like to be we like to be kind of vibrant, so we don't necessarily have a classroom setting. We would, and we also try to incorporate other health-related activities with HIV because we found that HIV on its own wouldn't necessarily be that attractive. So it's a whole lifestyle type activity that we try to implement where you would bring persons in from the Cancer Society, the Diabetes Foundation or the Diabetes Association, and you would have blood pressure checks and talks on healthy eating and stuff like that. Are the programs implemented by the Ministry of Tourism working? It wouldn't happen overnight, so it's, it's a long process. But what we have seen, persons being more receptive to the information and more tolerant to persons living with HIV. So when if we had to show a film and we have a discussion after, then you would see persons relating to the, the, the persons in the film and having compassion and stuff like that. So I think we're on the right track in terms of having persons being compassionate and being understanding about persons living with HIV because they, they do understand that HIV is, is kind of here to stay and um, you, you just live with it and, and deal with it. At the Barbados Government Information Service, a team of information officers was created to produce educational and entertaining programming and projects to promote awareness of HIV and AIDS. The GIS Internal HIV Education Committee was formed after the World Bank gave money to the Barbados government for departments, agencies and ministries to do HIV education within their departments and of course to reach out to the public to raise awareness. Um, out of that, departments, agencies, and ministries had to form internal committees, and that's why the committee came about. Um, at GIS, we plan events, we do PR for all of the other government agencies, and we knew that the best way to do it would be to have a subsection of different people from different parts of the department to come together and plan activities, and that's how it all started. Over the years, the committee has embarked on a number of projects to get their HIV awareness messages out to the Barbadian public. One of the first initiatives was a radio drama. One of our members scripted and produced a radio drama called Consequences 
that was a big hit. People loved it. It ended up on the radio. I think it was 13 episodes of a radio drama. And you may be pretty, you might be pretty young and not know that radio dramas used to be the rage. And we were a little uncertain if it would work, but it did because drama is drama, whether it be on TV or on radio, and it worked. And we actually are thinking of doing something like that again in the future. We also had a children's book called Sticks and Stones that looked at stigma and discrimination and the target audience there obviously is young people because we realized that there was an issue there and there continues to be an issue there as we see that's now leading into issues such as bullying and that is that's something that we will continue to work with. After that, the committee decided to go back to getting its messages across through entertainment. The most recent thing we have done is sponsoring Mahalia's Corner where the theme has been safe sex can be sexy. For those who don't know, Mahalia's Corner is actually a forum created by lead singer of the band Nexix, Miss Mahalia. And she has been so kind to allow us to be a part of her sessions where artists, young people, actually not only just young people, all kinds of people come together to meet, mingle, enjoy good music, um, and also spoken word. And we have different ways of reaching people at that venue. Sometimes we have a quiz, sometimes we go through little scenarios we, and they win prizes. So that has been another form where we've been trying to reach out to the public. In February of 2012, we had our first Love Poetry and Song at the Barbados Museum and it was part of Love Safely Week. The turnout was unbelievable and so we are doing it again on the 16th. But this time we're moving it to Ilara Court to give the people a little more room because we know that we had a little cramped quarters last time because we truly did not expect the numbers that we ended up seeing. Love Poetry and Song is basically just that. It's an atmosphere of love. It's where poets come together to do spoken word, where artists come and they sing, and we encourage them to bring positive messages. And of course, we are raising funds for the HIV Food Bank again. And so the message again will be safe sex can be sexy, or we're hoping that people will come out, support the HIV Food Bank, learn something and have a great time as well at Ilara Court on February 16th. Even though they are in the process of planning the second annual Love Poetry and Song, the committee is already thinking of new programs and ways of improving some of the older ones. Looking towards the future, we have some big plans again and sometimes we wonder how we're going to get it all done because this is all volunteer work on the part of uh, the GIS officers who do this. It's in addition to the work that we have to do. Uh, we are planning to take the mobile cinema of the past a new modern mobile cinema into the community with HIV and awareness and stigma and discrimination messages. We haven't ironed out exactly what that message will be, but we have the tools, so we just need to get the message to take it out there. Uh, we also want to go back into the schools, even though I think the messages are, are pretty solid in the schools, but uh, people aren't always using the tools that may get their attention. So we are thinking of doing puppetry in the schools, and not only with the HIV message, but there are a lot of other follow-on messages that, that you talked about bullying that, that you can also get across. In terms of consequences, that was such a, a, a success in terms of the, the people really got into it and they, they bought into the messaging. Unfortunately, we weren't testing as much then, so we didn't do pre and post tests. But we got a feeling that people at the time understood the messages we were trying to get across. So we're going to take a similar approach, but we know now that webisodes are pretty popular. Many people asked us to make consequences, uh, an animation, an animation, or a TV program. That's quite costly. So we're thinking of doing it from a web basis, which will be a little less costly, but would still reach quite a bit of people. So look out for something kind of like consequences coming to a webisode soon. To find out more about the Barbados National HIV AIDS Commission, the CSO grant system, the food bank, or other programs, visit the website www.nhacbb.org